What's going on guys and cheers to you because it is Friday, which means one thing, it's last call, which is our final order cutoff show. Friday, made it through the week, made it through hot and cold, we had the bolo show, but this is the most fun night of the week for us because it's the weekend and we're talking about final order cutoff. These are the books that come Monday night at 10 p.m. Diamond is cutting orders for it and you can no longer order this unless they open up reorders but for the most part those orders are cut off until release day so we're going to give you 10 comics that we like that are approaching final order cut off but we will provide the whole list on simplemanscomics.com but either way i got jack demeo with me my co-host aka mr bolo how are you doing on this friday night Oh, I'm doing great, Brian. Like you said, the end of the week, this is my favorite show. This is my favorite uh, time of the week. And, uh, you know, we've got a great selection of books to let people know to be on the lookout for. This list isn't ranked in any way. It's just 10 picks that we have in random order that we like for final order cutoff. And it's also important to know that these aren't all speculation picks. Some are for reading. Some we like to cover art for. And then some are could be speculation. And we're getting into them right now. But the first one... There's actually more than just one book, and we're talking about Local Comic Shop Day. Local Comic Shop Day is November 23rd, 2019. It's a celebration of all these local comic shops. It's been going on. This is the fifth year they've been doing it. So make sure if you check with your local comic shop, see if they're participating. LocalComicShopDay.com. We'll put a link to the description that has all the releases, but Jack's going to highlight some right now. Yeah, one of the reasons why we did this show, um, we got a lot of hate from the speculators and the speculation community, but we do this show not just for speculators. And the, everything we do on this channel, we do it for the retailers, the publishers, the creators, the collectors, everyone out there. And Local Comic Shop Day is a great example of something that helps out your local comic shop. Now, of course, like Brian said, Local Comic Shop Day is at the end of November, but this weekend is the last weekend before this Monday's FOC date for these shops to get their orders in and to be able to participate in Local Comic Book Shop Day. Now, Local Comic Shop Day has a lot of exclusive releases just for those shops. And again, this is brick and mortar stores only, not the online store. So if there's a store that's an online only store, they will not be able to participate. Um, you get to see things like hardcovers, bundles, uh, exclusive variants, and trade paperbacks. And some that I've got here to highlight to let you know and give you an example of what you can expect from Local Comic Shop Day. Um, DC Comics is releasing Deceased, a hardcover, with that great Matina uh, Joker cover that they did with the variant cover. There's only going to be 1,400 in print. Um, it's also going to have the one-shot, the Deceased one-shot that they did included in that hardcover. Image Comics is really going hard. A lot of the indies go real hard on local comic shop day. They've got Super Dinosaur number one, a new printing with that, uh, you know, commemorate the Amazon release of Robert Kirkman series and also Robert Kirkman series Walking Dead and they did a digital only special one shot that Brian K. Vaughn did they are going to release a print version of that for local comic shop day um, another great thing about local comic shop day is you get an opportunity to see some new series is coming up some variants of some up and coming series is one from Image Comics is Philadelphia and that's from Jason Sean Alexander who you may recognize from his work on Spawn. And Mad Cave is doing their wrestling story over the ropes, which I could not be more excited about. And there will be an exclusive variant for local comic shop day. Marvel, of course, participates. You've got a New Mutants number one variant with a print run of a thousand. Um, and uh, Absolute Carnage number five, a uh, print to order variant. So shops can order as much as they want. That one should be cover price, but for every 20 copies they order, they will get a limited variant. And in the past, those limited variants have gone for big money if the issue has been a key issue. And there's a good chance Absolute Carnage number five could be just that. Um, Boom is doing something really unique. They're releasing a Power Rangers blind box. Inside this box, you will get the hardcover for Shattered Grid, the story that really blew up Mighty Morphin Power Rangers with Boom Studios. You are also going to get a Power Rangers number 42 exclusive local comic book shop, Dave variant. And here's where the blind box part comes in. You're going to get two random Power Rangers variants from Boom. We don't know what they are. Could they be incentives? Could they be... Uh, con exclusives could they be store exclusives we just don't know and that's going to be the fun in it um also we talked about trade paperbacks 
Vault Comics is releasing a special gold edition trade paperback for these Savage Shores, their landmark series. So there's more releases. We're going to have them listed on SimplemansComics.com. There's a link in the description that's going to allow you to go to the local Comic Shop Day website and see the rest of the releases. But that gives you an idea of some of these exclusive and exciting releases that you're going to be able to see in your shop. But do your shop a favor. Let them know this weekend if there's any of these releases that you really want to get your hands on. That lets them know that you want, A, want them to participate, and B, you want a specific release so they can make sure that they order those because it's tough for shops to know what to order and how much they're going to need. And you can really aid your shop by letting them know what you're interested in. Right, and it's important to know, we, although Local Comic Shop Day is November 23rd, they are going to have the list of participating comic shops on their website by October 15th. So to sign up for it, seems like the deadlines are fastly approaching. So that's why we're bringing it up now and all those great releases. So make sure you guys check with your local comic book stores. Make sure they're participating in local comic shop day. And if not, let them know you're interested. This next book we're going to talk about is from Boom Studios. And it is Something is Killing the Children, number two, second print. Yeah, now we just talked about this book last week, Brian. We talked about issue number two. We had really no information in the solicit. But you know what? It didn't matter. Sales went up 10,000 copies um, at FOC period just last week. Now, some of the speculators will attribute that to people like us, Brian, talking about it. But if you watch last week's show, we really don't know anything that goes on in this issue. The big attributing factor to why these orders rose and why these orders continue to rise for these Boom series is, are these amazing Boom guaranteed program perks that these stores are getting. We're talking terms. We're talking the ability to return books. Boom is is absolutely pitching to stores for issues number one through three of their new series is they're telling stores over order allow us to take the risk if you don't sell those books you can send them back for the full refund that is really encouraging stores to go out on a limb and with issue number two they did it and they did it so much that they fast-tracked another second print really think once in future number one for this kind of thing now this fast track second print the print run is already set in stone. So it does not matter this weekend how many of you go out and put in your order for FOC. Ross Ritchie, the CEO of Boom Studios, already put an Instagram post that this is a fast-tracked release and that orders will most likely be allocated. So here we have Immortal Hulk number 25. We're not used to seeing a lot of covers, but this issue is going to have a lot of them. We have that regular Alex Ross. We're going to have a Chris Anka Mary Jane variant. We're going to have a, a Bennett variant. We're going to have some ratios. we got two 1 in 25 variants. One's from McGinnis. One's from Andrea Sorrentino. We're going to have a 1 in 50 Ron Lim variant. There's also a 1 in 100 Gene Colon Hidden Gem variant, as well as a 1 in 500 Alex Ross variant. Makes you wonder what the heck's going on with this issue. Well, I'll tell you what, Brian. This was one that a lot of people were speculating was going to be the finale of Immortal Hulk. Now, it doesn't look like that is the case, but either way, this is a groundbreaking double-sized issue. Now, it's important to note the MSRP on this one is $5.99, so a little bit of a jump up from the typical MSRP on an Immortal Hulk release. But, you know, the solicits laying it on thick. They're telling you you've never read a Hulk story like this before. They're telling you, you've never read a Marvel comic like this before. The heat death of our universe has come and gone, and Hulk is finally dead now billions of years later. The ninth, cosmo <clears throat> the ninth cosmos co cowers before the breaker of worlds. Don't really know what all that means. I just know that they're letting us know this is going to be something big. But you know what? This is where, Brian, this is why we do this show. One of the reasons we want to let... Our viewers know, again, a little bit of our speculation insight. This is one I'd say be careful with. Um, the, yes, the solicitation lays it on thick and makes you think this is an issue I got to get. Now, from a reader perspective, I definitely want to check this one out. But you listed all those variants. You listed multiple variants at the same ratio level. You and I have talked about this on the channel before. More often than not, when that happens, it hurts the value of the ratios in general. Another thing it does is it really intrigues store variant producers. If I'm a store who produces store variants and I hear that many ratios, and I know that my production minimum for a Marvel variant is around 3,000 copies, 
I know that I'm going to be getting a whole lot of variants for my 3,000 copies, which incentivizes me, hence the term retailer incentive, to go ahead and place that order. That is something that if for the regular speculator is something to be on the lookout for because the reality is that that is probably going to drive print runs up. So a lot of times when these FOC print runs go up, it isn't you out there who are individually going out and saying, you know what, I want five copies or ten copies like a lot of the bluebirds think. It's actually when these stores say, I want 3,000 copies. I want 3,000 copies. I want 3,000 copies. Nothing drives a print run up faster than that. So this is a book I expect to have a high print run, which is why we're talking about it. I think it's going to be a big read. It, it, it's going to be an uh, issue to keep – an IL4, there's no way I'm leaving it on the shelf at my LCS. I definitely have to take this one home with me. But from a speculation perspective, be very careful. And the next book we have for you tonight is joker killer smile this comes from that dc black label it's gonna have two different covers for it we have a regular cover by andrea sorrentino as well as a kick ass love this cover a variant by carrie andrews right now we've talked on the channel about how much we have enjoyed these dc black label uh releases and i'm a big jeff lemire fan and i am really excited to see how he tackles the joker now it's hard to predict what these are going to do from a speculation perspective but either way amazing reads but i will say this story seems to be about joker and a psychotherapist dr ben arnell apparently he's a world beating uh confident psychotherapist now again we know joker's history with therapists uh, we know what he did with harley quinn so I think this story is going to um, really test this doctor's limits. But here's the thing. I did a little Google search. I don't think this doctor's ever appeared in a comic before. So at the very least, we know that this is a first appearance. And since the last therapist that dealt with him turned into somebody else, could we see that here? I don't know. But that's something to keep an eye out for speculation-wise. But either way, it, this is one that whether you speculate on it or not – it's going to be a fun read. Jeff Lemire is a great writer. The Joker is as dynamic a character as it gets. And these covers are fantastic. Right. And it's got that same creative team like you mentioned, Andrea Sortino. But they're the one that turned around that Green Arrow run for a while in New 52 when Jeff Lemire started taking over writing duties and all that. And a lot of people are big fans of Gideon Falls. That's another great comic book. So we have the same creative team from those books working on this one so i'm anxious to see how this story unfolds either way else worlds outside continuity of whatever you want to call it this looks like a great read so i'm in for it me too and that last line in the solicitation is what really gets me it says mr smiles is waiting at the basement door wait who's mr smiles so again we talk about first appearances. That sounds as clear as day as a first appearance right there. So $5.99 MSRP, that's cheaper by $2 than that Harleen release that just came out uh, this past week. So a little safer bet. Looks like a couple first appearances. Great writing, like you said. Great art. I'm in. Right. And last thing, this is also going to bookend the end of the month of October, or at the beginning of October, we got that great Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie coming out. So everything's going to be all Joker for DC coming through October at least. Next up, kicking back over to Marvel, we have Avengers number 25. It's got three different covers for it. You have the regular cover. You have a Jay Anacleto, Mary Jane variant, as well as an Alex Ross Marvel's 25th tribute variant. Yeah, and you know, th this Avengers run has been building and building in reader buzz. And I think just judging by the cover A of this book, this one is going to be one of those ones that people grab off the LCS shelves at the last second. So that's why we're talking about it right here at the Last Call Show, because now you can go ahead and get your order in for this book. Save a little bit of money from your LCS. Get that FOC discount that a lot of stores and online retailers offer. This book is going to feature Ghost Riders. That's right, Ghost Riders. Because it looks like we've got Robbie Reyes, Johnny Blaze, and the fan favorite Cosmic Ghost Rider featured right on cover A. The uh, 
Solicitation talks about the Avengers go to hell to join a wild race for the soul of Robbie Reyes, who's desperate to learn tr the truth once and for all about what sort of ghost rider he's become. But all of those answers, all of those sort of answers always come with a dreadful cost, especially when Mephisto is involved. That is reader buzz written all over it. I don't know if we're going to see any speculation. You don't see any high ratio incentive for this book. You don't see any obvious first appearance type talk in the solicitation, but people love Ghost Rider. People love Cosmic Ghost Rider. Robbie Reyes has a real cult following. This is a book I would pay attention to. And you mentioned before we started talking about this, but that um, Marvel's 25th Alex Ross variant is gorgeous. I think that'd be a great one to pick up too for the PC if you're an Alex Ross fan. Right. And then there's one main reason why I picked this book up. And that's because of the author. This is one of those books yes. that's written by Jason Aaron. And usually, if anything, Jason Aaron's attached to it, good, bad, or indifferent. Support the guy. Love the guy as a writer. Miss him. Going to be missing him on Thor, but I'm definitely oh, you know what? And that lets me bring it up. The speculation, Brian. We've talked about this privately, but talking about it on air, there's a lot of speculation. New York Comic Con, we're going to get the announcement. Donnie Cates taking over Thor. You are probably the only person not excited by that. I'm not. I'm, I'll, I've been reading Jason Aaron, what, since 2011 on Thor? So uh, nothing against Donnie Cates. Nothing against Donnie Cates, but I love me some Jason Aaron Thor run. So um, I'd pour a little bit of this out, but I'm not going to waste it. Yeah, I would say make sure you secure those first appearance of the Necro Sword um, and uh, your Null stuff if that rumor is true, which I believe it to be. Because I told Brian a good six months ago when I saw some of the posts Downey Cates was making, uh, very Thor-related, that I thought that this was going to happen when Jason Aaron stepped down. So um, Downey Cates is a big, uh, a big fan of Jason Aaron. So I think that this is kind of a natural progression. Action Comics 1016 this is going to have a cover A from Jamal Campbell as well as that regular price cover B, which is from Brian Hitch. We've all been building up that Naomi. We've been seeing it in the last few issues. A lot of people are saying her spec's dead. I kind of tend to disagree. I think it's just <coughs> hanging out, <coughs> waiting to attack. I mean, Jack's all coughed up over it. But yeah, either way, right. tell us more about this one, Jack. Well, again, this issue is all about two characters that had a lot of buzz within their inception um, in the DC universe. The Red Mist versus Naomi. You see it right there on the cover. Um, now, Naomi, obviously, a lot more than the Red Mist. But this issue teases a little bit more into the secrets of Naomi's backstory. And that's why I can never believe that Naomi Speck is dead. The series is on hiatus. We know it's coming back. Um, Jamal Campbell had some other stuff he needed to work on. He's doing the covers for Action Comics right now um, while Naomi's involved in the story. Naomi Solo is going to come back, but I think when it comes back, it's going to come back as something different. Once we know where Naomi's place in the DC Universe is, Brian Michael Bendis is slow playing this story. That's clear. The last couple issues have had teases. Um, the teases continue. And if you read Naomi, you know that that's how that entire series went. We, we thought we'd have these answers a while ago. So yeah. they, uh, they killed you in the solicits. You're like, aha, <laughs> every single month. So again, that's why we're not saying this is the issue. I'm not pounding the table telling you this is the one you need to grab. It's definitely going to be this one. I just tell you like, look, they're teasing it. It could be the one it's one to be on the lookout for. Um, but we don't know. This is kind of how Brian Michael Bendis goes. But there's no way in my mind that they've been teasing who Naomi is and where she comes from this hard without there being some sort of major reveal on the horizon somewhere. Um, whether she's a lantern of some sort, like some people speculate, whether she's related to Superman, like others speculate, whether she's related to Zod, like others speculate. I think at some point we are going to find out. And it looks like the Dark Knight is on the case. The detective, Bruce Wayne, Batman, I think uh, he's going to be the one who uncovers this.
Moving back over to Indy for a little bit, we get Vault, and that's right, we have Money Shot number one. This is going to have the regular cover, but it also has that classic Vault Vintage Homage cover from Tim Daniel and Nathan Gooden, and this one is homaging, what is it, Fantastic Four 220? Yes, Fantastic Four 220, not a key issue, one that you and I weren't even familiar with, we had to go find but, yes, this book is uh, co-written by Sarah Beatty, who's a controversial comedian who has become popular with some of her uh, witty and, say, raunchy social media posts. So it's going to be really interesting. The solicit of this story talks about sex sells even in the future. And when you're short on cash, alien porn is the way to go. I don't know, Brian. Uh, we talked about this on um, the Bolo Show. It seems like these sexual-driven stories – are becoming popular. It's not usually my thing. Uh, makes me a little red faced to talk about this kind of stuff. Um, but you know what? It seems to be uh, um, a popular genre. So I'll also say when we were per talking about uh, Vault Vintage Variant Production with Vault Comics, Vault was very high on this series. They suggested we take a look at this series. We felt like it wasn't in line with the all ages aspect of comicbookinvest.com. But Vault being that high on it, I always say follow the money. It seems like they're putting money into it. it. seems like they're behind it. Yeah, like the money shot. To me, <laughs> I, I look at it, it reminds me of uh, the old Leisure Suit Larry game, but with, with the female character. But Either way, always love me some Vault, so I'll definitely be picking this one up. Up next, we get a Marvel character, but from an indie publisher. If you want to call them indie, we'll say small press. But this is Marvel Action Spider-Man number 10. This is going to have the regular cover, but there's also a what? A 1 in 10 incentive from John Boy Myers? Correct. And John Boy Myers is becoming a really kind of cult popular artist. His uh, fan base is growing. Um, definitely a kind of a rising star as far as a, a cover artist is concerned. But you know what this is all about, Brian? It's not even about Spider-Man. This is about Venom. What is hotter in comics right now than symbiotes? I can't think of anything other than maybe the X-Men. and Gold right balls. Now, yeah. <laughs> and right now, this issue number 10 is going to kick off a, the Venom storyline for Marvel Action Spider-Man. Now, Marvel Action Spider-Man is a kid's release. It has seen its numbers drop drastically. Um, it's down to around 8,000 per issue. Now, I will say I expect a bump up from that with the fact that this is Venom involved. Now, people are going to attribute that to what we're doing right now, but the reality is I think people are aware that this is a Venom story and there are a lot of Venom fans and completionists who are going to jump all over this. But to our Simpleman's Comics family who are looking for a decent spec play, I think this is a decent spec play, especially that 1 in 10 incentive. A lot of times you can pre-order those incentives for $6. You can grab them for a ratio at $10. I honestly think both are safe plays. Even if this book jumps up and sees a 50% increase in um, distribution, goes up to about 12,000 copies, which again would be a 50% increase. Books don't see 50% month-to-month increases. But if this one did, you'd still only be looking at the 1,200 print run for that 1 in 10 incentive, making it one of the rarer Venom incentive books out there on the market. So this is one to keep an eye out for. Plus, with the fact that it's only a 1 in 10 ratio, it's a cheaper buy-in than the typical 1 in 25 ratios that you'll see from the traditional Marvel releases. This is one I've had earmarked ever since this storyline was announced a couple months ago. This is one I've been paying attention to. This is one when we created this show I absolutely knew I had to talk about. And there is one speculator in particular, my man from Rock Hill, South Carolina, who is not going to be happy I'm talking about this. He came up to me and said, please don't talk about this book. But you know what? we got to share it with the family. That's right. So get on the phone. Get online. Make sure you, each of you order about 30,000 of them bitches. Now, this one, we just talked about issue one on the Bolo Show this week, but we're talking about Harley number two. Just like the first issue, it's going to have a regular cover as well as a regular priced variant, both by that same artist. I'm going to butcher the name, but I'm going to go and take a shot at it. I want to say it's Shaipan Sechik. 
I know it's Croatian. I probably mispronounce it. Awesome artist. Love both these covers. And that's why we have this in the FOC because this was also Jack's long-term play for issue number one. Right. And that's why we're talking about this because before I got a chance to read it, I put the word out to the comicbookinvest.com, CBSI, Instagram community and said, what do you guys think about this? And I got to say, resounding, overwhelming positivity for this first issue. Um, the one negative we ever heard, excuse me, that's what happens when you're drinking beers while you're doing your speculation talk. But that one thing that we ever heard was um, people say, well, we don't need another origin. Well, you know what? I think we do because the origin has kind of been so muddied. We need kind of like A, a definitive one, B, one that really fits this character. And people enjoyed that first issue, really felt like uh, the first issue encompassed what they would hope for in a Harley Quinn comic, not what we are typically used to getting. So I think most people are going to be excited for issue two. It's a three issue miniseries. Um, so, you know, it's easily digestible. Um, I think everybody who jumped on issue one from a reader buzz perspective will jump on number two. I don't think this is a spec play, but again, that's not the point of the show. We want to give you an overview of the market, everything that we're looking at. And this is a definite reader buzz pickup. It's not one you're going to see as the AK Mr. Bolo long-term pick of the week, but it is one I'm excited to read. Yeah. I actually like the variant cover on this one better than the regular cover. So here we have Marauders number one. So it's a number one issue from Marvel, so you know there's going to be a lot of covers for it. We have Russell Donovan doing a regular cover, but we also have variant covers. We have variants from Jonathan Hickman, Mark Bagley, Philip Tan, Adam Cuter, and Todd Nock. Right. This one, to me, looks like Pirates of the Caribbean meet the X-Men, because the X-Men set sail at dawn. Even the glorious new dawn of mutant kind faces hardships and oppressions from their human counterparts, led by Captain Kate Pry and funded by Emma Frost and the Hellfire Trading Company. Marauders Storm, Pyro, Bishop, and Iceman sail the seas of the world to protect those hated and feared. So we talked about this when we're talking on a weekly basis about House of X and Powers of X. We said, you know, yeah, those theories are great. They're doing excellent for speculation. There's a lot of reader buzz. But the real key is what happens when those series is spin off into the final say x-men teams and the marauders is certainly a new team one we haven't seen before and it's really going to be one of those like litmus tests of um our people are the heat of the house of x and powers of x series is going to be able to translate to so many different x-men teams because we already know about x-force we already know there's an X-Men series. Um, we know there's Marauders, and there's going to be more to come. So it'll be really interesting to see which of these series is succeed and which ones fail. But I know that the fervor for X, everything, is all over the place. Um, I think that Hickman variant is going to be one that people pay attention to because Hickman's name is resonating so much in the community right now. And it's a design variant, so you know how those have been kind of catching fire lately. Could be a new character. Could just be like the kind of like reimagining of Kitty Pride as Captain Kate. But so we'll have to wait and see. And of course, I saw Marauders, and kind of wish they brought back the hip hop covers for a minute. All those Stranger oh, Comics yeah. did it. I would love to see Tribe Called Quest Midnight Marauders homage variant for this. But there you go. You gave some retailer an excellent homage idea for an store exclusive. Yeah. And that's going to be the last of the single issues. But as always for these shows, we got Jack, who's going to give us the late printing comics that are coming up for this final order cutoff as well. Right. There's a lot, a lot of late printing stuff coming out right now. Um, a lot of people are, especially Marvel, is going to load us up this week with late printings. First off, though, we're going to talk about Boom Studios. Boom Studios not only has an Angel Number no. 6 FOC Bayless Human variant, but they've got a... FOC 20 copy puppet incentive variant, which is something we haven't really seen, uh, FOC incentive variant. Um, we're also going to get, uh, from, again, coming from Marvel, Absolute Carnage number one, fifth printing. We're going to get Absolute Carnage number two, third printing. We're, we're going to get Absolute Carnage number three, second printing. So great opportunity to catch up on reading Absolute Carnage if you haven't. 
Um, we're also going to get Absolute Carnage Lethal Protectors, number one, the second printing. Absolute Carnage versus Deadpool, number one, the third printing. Black Cat, number four, the second printing. House of X, number two, the fourth printing. House of X, number three, the third printing. House of X, number five, the second printing. It's King Thor, number one, second printing. Miles Morales, Spider-Man, number ten, the second printing. And that's one to keep an eye out for. That's the first ultimatum. Powers of X number two, the fourth printing. Powers of X number three, the third printing. Powers of X number four, the third printing. Powers of X number five, the second printing. Silver Surfer Black number four, the second printing. And Spider-Man number one, the second printing. That's that great J.J. Abrams series. That was my long-term play of the week. Um, so that is something to be on the lookout for. A lot of key issues going to later prints. But we also have... Um, Dr. Mirage number three, which releases this week, is having a special cover D pre-order bundle edition, which is a kind of a tough to get book that comes from Valiant Comics. So those are all of our late printings and late additions as far as covers to the FOC order list. Yeah, make sure you guys order at least like 50,000 of each one of them bitches. So there it is, guys. Those are our 10 picks for FOC as well as those regular printings. And if you're looking for our recommendations on where to get some of these books, make sure you check out our channel sponsors, FrankieComics.com, as well as Nick Dwortman at Slabbed Heroes because he offers graded 9.8 copies of a lot of these issues for FOC on his website. Links to both of those, Frankies and Slabbed Heroes, in the description of this video. Yeah, and by, by all means, support your local LCS. Support your local LCS through local Comic Shop Day. Let them know you want to see them participate, and be sure to shop with them on local Comic Shop Day because there's a lot of sales that go on that weekend as well. So keep your eye out for that. And I'm out of Kool-Aid, so good night. Good night.